Hi, and welcome to the gameplay video for Quest Awakening of Melior. I'm Andrew, and I'll be playing through a game and explaining the rules as I go. Now this is a setup I put together for Tabletop Simulator, a program you can buy through Steam. Quest isn't affiliated with Tabletop Simulator, but it is available for free through the Steam Workshop, so if you have a copy of Tabletop Simulator, check that out. I'll be dropping some tips for playing Quest and Tabletop Simulator as I go. Also, this module is made from prototype components. Most cards are missing artwork, but that's part of what Kickstarter is for. The graphic design and gameplay are complete, but the level of Kickstarter funding will also determine the exact components. The game will come with the character, encounter, and event cards, as well as five six-sided dice. The game will also include components for tracking hit points, character level, and stage level. In the tabletop simulator setup, those components are three additional six-sided dice on the playmat. Our hit points are set at six, our level is set at one, and the stage level is set at one. I also have a few extra dice and some counters for tracking card effects. Now let's take a look at the cards that will come out of the box. On the bottom left of the pyramid, we have the character events for crawls. We'll be playing with crawls this game, so I'll stack those up with the encounter events for Glowmount, Meltwood, and Shadow Cave, since those are the encounter types available in the base game. In Tabletop Simulator, pick up a stack of cards by clicking and holding, then release the mouse where you want to drop the stack. I press F to flip the stack over, and I combine it with the stack of the game's 20 standard events to create the full event deck of 40 cards. Click and hold to pick up the deck, and just move the mouse around to shuffle it before putting it back down. Now I'll build the encounter deck, which is comprised of the three encounter types we choose. Again, Quest Awakening of Melior comes with the Glowmount, Meltwood, and Shadow Caves encounter types, but there's room for expansion and encounter deck customization. I shuffled the deck and used the Q and E keys to rotate the deck into alignment with the deck space on the playmat. However, having the deck oriented that way will make dealing out the stage a hassle, so I'll keep the cards oriented portrait style. Since we're using crawls, I place his character card at the indicated point on the mat, and I stack Zebra Amelior with her character cards and move her off to the side. As I do so, you can see her full art on the back of the card. Zebra Amelior is recommended for a more basic game, but we're going to dive right in with crawls. Ensuring the encounter deck is shuffled, I'm ready to deal out the stage. I'll fast forward a bit through the magic of video, but I simply deal one card to each of the seven positions in the fourth row, one card each to each position in the third row, one card to each of the three positions in the second row, and one card into the first row. The playmat provides nice indications of where to place the cards, but it's not necessary to play. You'll get the gist of all this momentarily, but the basic turn structure is to draw an event card, choose an encounter to face and reveal it, discard excess encounter cards, and then face the encounter by rolling five dice and locking them into combos. Dice fitting encounters combos must lock into those combos, and you may lock and unlock freely the dice that fit into your character's combos. You can re-roll any number of times, but you can only roll unlocked dice, and you must re-roll all of them when you do. Once you're done rolling all dice, perform the text of completed combos and apply the combat, survival, and intellect bonuses they grant. Check to see whether any of your character's stats is higher than the corresponding stat of the encounter. If one is, you defeat the encounter with one of those stats. If not, you take damage equal to the highest difference between one of its stats and yours, but you can't take more damage than the stage level at once. If there's a tie between your stat and the encounter's, you defeat it, but you take one damage. Those are the basics, and we'll see how it plays out over the course of some actual encounters. Let's draw the first event card. By clicking on a deck and immediately moving the mouse, I draw a card, and I press F to flip it over. Holding Alt to zoom in on the card, I can take a look at this event. Tenacious Foe says that we must defeat the encounter with all of the stats it has. We'll see what that means in a moment. We also see under the title is the card type event. This just means it's a standard event. Its effect will apply to the current encounter, and then the event will be discarded. I pick up the first encounter and flip it over with F. The card in that position is our only option for the first encounter of the stage. We'll take a look at the encounter in a moment, but the first step is always to roll our five six-sided dice. I draw a rectangle around the dice I want to select using my mouse, I click and hold to pick them up, and then I shake the mouse and release to roll them. I've rolled a two, which I can see matches one of the icons on the encounter card, so I match them up. Let's take a look. Crystallized Camp has two stats combat and survival. Its combat is a flat 7, which is a relatively rare and high stat. Usually, stats have stars in them, indicating the level of the card it's on. As you can see, Crystallized Camp's survival is a star with plus 2 on top. This means its survival stat is its level plus 2 for a total of 3, since we're on stage level 1. It also has a combo that requires 3 2s, and the result of the combo says you can't defeat this encounter with survival. That would mean we would have to defeat it with combat, which would be much harder in this case. We've only rolled one two so far, so we don't have to worry about that yet. 
Now we can lock in the 6 we rolled into one of Krawls' combos and the 5 into his other combo. Let's take a look at Krawls. His combat stat is star, which means his level, which is currently 1. His survival is star plus 1 for a total of 2, and his intellect is his level, so it's also 1. His dino shift ability asks us to check our dice total each encounter before re-rolling or applying other effects to see if we rolled 21 or higher, but that doesn't apply this time. Finally, he has two combos. With a 4 and a 6, he'll gain plus 2 combat and plus 2 intellect for the encounter. The red icon by the 2 indicates combat, and the blue icon by the 2 indicates intellect. The other combo requires a single 5 and grants plus 1 survival, indicated by the green icon by the 1. Note that each icon has a distinct shape and position to aid players in recognizing them. The 4 we rolled doesn't complete the combo, so our combat and intellect aren't increased, but the 5 did complete Krawls' survival combo, raising it to 3, 1 for star, his level, plus the bonus he has, plus the completed combo. Technically, the bonus from the combo isn't applied until everything is finalized and we're ready to resolve the encounter, but we may as well track that combo's bonus now. Taking a look at Crystallized Camp, we're reminded its combat is way too high. We're 6 points too low here, but our survival of 3 is equal to its survival of 3. Normally, we could take a tie here, choosing to defeat the Crystallized Camp with survival but taking 1 damage because of the tie. Or we could re-roll the 2 unlocked 1s, or even the 5 and or the 6 as well, and try to increase our stats more. However, the event we drew was Tenacious Foe, which means we have to defeat the Crystallized Camp with Survival and Combat in order to win. There's no combination of dice that will let us attain a combat stat of 7 this encounter, so we won't be able to win this one. I discard the encounter by returning it to the encounter deck, discard the event card, and set Krawls' hit points to 5. We take damage equal to the highest difference between the encounter stats and our corresponding stats, meaning we should take 6 damage, the camp 7 minus our 1. I could have tried to use dice combos to reduce that damage. However, damage is capped by the stage level. I didn't bother re-rolling dice because since the stage level is 1, we can't take more than 1 damage at a time. I move the die to the 5 position on the mat and then press the 5 key while mousing over the die to change its face. Now we're ready for the next encounter, so I start by drawing an event. This time it's learned tactics. This is a persistent event and a boon. Persistent means it will stay in play until the card's text, or another card's text, says it's discarded. Boon indicates a beneficial persistent event. We can only have three boons active at a time, and if we draw a fourth, we have to choose one to discard. Learned Tactics says that we can discard it and an encounter from our XP to defeat an encounter with the same name as the discarded one. We currently don't have any XP, so that won't be useful yet. Now I can choose which of the three encounters in the second row to enter. They're all glow mount, but I choose the one to the left because it will lead to more options for Meltwood encounters, and Crawls tends to be good at defeating those. I reveal the encounter and then clear away excess encounter cards, forming a new, smaller pyramid shape and discarding the excess to the encounter deck. Just for fun, I select the cards on the stage and shift them on the mat. I won't do this in subsequent stages, but it's something I like to do just to bring the cards closer and create a certain aesthetic. I roll the dice and match the rolled 3 to the encounter's combo and the 6 to Krawls' combo. The card is Twisted Townsfolk, which has a combat and intellect of star, meaning its level, which is currently 1. The 3 doesn't complete its combo, so we could take a tie with either combat or intellect, but we take 1 damage. Instead, I decide to re-roll all unlocked dice to try for a 4 in order to complete Krawls' combo and raise his combat and intellect to 3. I roll a 6, which can't be used, since the 6 spot in Krawls' incomplete combo is already taken. The 2 is useless. The 5 locks into Krawls' survival combo, which is useless in this case, but it prevents that 5 from rolling a 1, and we can unlock it later on if we need to. I roll a 5 and a 6 again. Since Krawls' survival combo is completed, I could lock that 5 into a new instance of that combo, completing it again and gaining another point of useless survival. I decide not to, and I re-roll both dice. Again, the roll is useless. This time, however, I roll two ones. One one locks immediately into the Twisted Townsfolk's combo, completing it and granting the Townsfolk plus one to both its combat and intellect, bringing them both to two. Now we can't tie anymore. And since that combo is completed, the other one can lock into a new instance of that combo. Now I really need a four, so I unlock the five from the useless survival combo and I roll it. Since the only relevant results here are three and four, I decide ahead of time to use a shortcut. This means that if I roll a one, a two, or a three, I'll treat the die as the negative outcome, which in this case is three. And if I roll a four, a five, or a six, I'll treat the die as the positive outcome, which would be a four. I roll a two, 
and that changes to a 3, completing the second instance of the Twisted Town Folks combo and bringing its combat and intellect up to 3. I have the 6, but I can't do much with it, so I accept defeat. I'd take 2 damage, which is its combat or intellect of 3 minus crawls of 1, but since the stage level is 1, I'll only take 1 damage. I'll remember to adjust my HP in a moment. I drop one die off screen, so I use the W, A, S, and D keys to move my relative position to the table. I find the die and return it. Here you also get a glimpse of the rules reminder cards, which I've placed in the tabletop simulator setup. Preparing for the next encounter, I draw an event. This one is Lore Journal, another boon. It gives us a combo that lets us use sixes to gain intellect. I choose to go for a Meltwood encounter, reveal it, and clear the excess encounters. I roll the dice, and I note that my dice total is a beefy 24, triggering Krauss's Dino Shift, which heals him for all his HP and transforms him. Unfortunately, zooming on the flipped card shows it upside down, so I rotate it with the Q and E keys to take a look. Tyrannosaur Krauss has a star plus 3 combat, star plus 3 survival, and star intellect, meaning they're currently 4, 4, and 1. This side's Dino Shift power means that we can't level up, which won't be an issue at least until we start gaining some XP and that when we take damage we'll transform back. Tyrannosaur Crawls just has one combo, which requires three sixes and grants three intellect. I rotate the zoomed in card back, otherwise Tabletop Simulator will show all future cards we zoom in on upside down. I finally adjust Crawls' HP from the previous encounter and then adjust it for Dino Shift, putting us back at six. Let's take a look at Melwolf Pack. Its stats are all star plus one, so they're two, and its ability says that we have to defeat it with all three stats instead of the usual of being able to choose any one. It doesn't have a combo, but it does have a key icon by a one, meaning all ones are locked. They can be applied to combos as normal, but we can't re-roll them. Tyrannosaur Crawls' combat and survival are four, which is plenty, but his intellect is just one. We have two sixes, which is two-thirds of the way toward completing his combo. We could re-roll the other three dice with little risk, since the Meltwolf pack doesn't have a combo, but the lore journal boon we have can use those sixes instead, increasing our intellect by just the two points we need. We're able to defeat the encounter with all three stats, as per its ability, so I move it to my experience points pile, or XP. Once I have three XP cards, crawls can level up. The next event is Umiji Mote, perhaps the most beneficial event in the game. It's also a boon, so we have three now. It starts with three counters, which I'll use a token to track along the bottom of the card. We can freely spend its counters for HP, but we'll have to discard it when it has zero. And we can build its counters up during encounters by using its combo. Note that you can use the shadows of lifted objects in Tabletop Simulator in order to see where they will fall when they're released. I choose to go for another Meltwood encounter and roll my die, locking in the two twos into Field of Maws's combo. It has only a survival stat, limiting our options for defeating it. Its survival is only one though, but since we've already rolled two twos, thus completing its combo twice, it's already up to three. Tyrannosaur Crawls crushes that at four though, so we shouldn't have a problem. The Field of Maws's second combo requires two twos, which we rolled, and increases its survival by three, but we don't have to worry about that since the combo is in a level four plus box, indicating it only applies while we're on stage level four or higher. I lock the sixes I rolled into Amiji Mote's combo and decide not to reroll the four, as I'd be risking completing a third instance of the field's combo. I gain the field as XP and then note its treasure in the top right of the card. Tyrannosaur Crawls hears Saurian whispers, giving us a token XP, which is off to the right of the mat. It takes 3 XP to level up, but since Tyrannosaur Crawls' ability says he can't level up, we'll have to wait on that. Normally, you just flip 3 XP over in the pile and increase the character level by 1, thus increasing all stats with stars in them. Instead, I shuffle the encounter deck, deal out the next stage, and increase the stage level by 1. Now the encounter Crawls faces will be that much more difficult. I hope you've had a good look at how Quest Awakening of Melior plays, and some of the interesting press-your-luck decisions that can arise. Transforming into a T-Rex is always cool too. If you want to see the rest of the game, you can check out the follow-up video, in which I eventually draw an event card with a quest on it, which would allow me to win the game. Will I complete the quest first, or will Crawls lose his last hit point against a dire threat?